and disturbing details today from an unsealed search warrant relating to the mass killing investigation going on in Nova Scotia. Search warrant documents obtained through the courts show the shooter who killed 22 people last month had documents related to planning a mass murder. Now, the documents are heavily redacted, as you can see in black, but describe the shooter as abused when he was a young boy and also as, quote, disturbed, abusive, very smart, and a psychopath, according to police interviews. The documents also show that the shooter owned a number of properties, as well as vehicles, guns, ammunition, as well as look-alike police cars and uniforms. Also highlighted in these details, some harrowing eyewitness accounts, including people who were shot at in their cars. The shooter also had a number of security cameras and was said to be paranoid. He did not have a criminal record, but was convicted of an assault back in 2002. This new information was obtained through a legal challenge by multiple media organizations, including us here at CTV News. Let's bring in our public safety analyst, Chris Lewis. He was helping us cover this story, of course, when it happened. And Chris, you've been looking at some of these documents. Uh, your key takeaways here. Uh, two, Todd, that really jump out at me. Number one is that early in the evening, or sorry, during the evening of the 18th, when this first started, uh, two people were shot at by the suspect who they knew uh, recognized and was driving an RCMP car. When he pulled up alongside them, they thought it was the RCMP. They saw a fire uh, next to the road, and and so it went downhill from there. They survived, thankfully, but you'd like to think they'd have reported that to the RCMP. So if they did, then the RCMP would have known very quickly who and what they were looking for. Having said that, uh, many, many people in the community reported, according to the information to obtain the search warrant, that they knew this individual was troubled. They described him through various uh, uh, terms that described different mental illnesses in their view. Uh, he knew They knew he had guns. He talked about uh, weapons, assault rifles, as he said, um, handguns. Uh, they knew he didn't like the police. They knew he was abusive, that he'd abuse his common law. And on and on. And then had RCMP cars with decals on them. And he even said that he knew he'd be in trouble if he got caught with them. So nobody seemingly reported any of this to the police. If they had, there'd have been an investigation. Yeah, and so I'm glad you brought that up because that was the thing I took away as well when I was reading over uh, what we could read in the documents. And the, the idea that there were certainly a lot of red flags here, Chris, uh, but nobody reported it in. And I'm curious why that happens, why sometimes people shy away uh, from maybe saying something. Are they concerned about their own safety or, or maybe, you know, they just don't want to get involved? What do you think? All of that and more, Todd. Some people just, you know, particular in small town areas, aren't going to report people that they've known all their lives, gone to high school with and, and deal with in business. And, and others are afraid to because they're afraid of repercussions. Uh, you know, on that, that end of the world, it's not like they're afraid of gang activity. It was a local guy that made dentures. Uh, so, uh, you know, why didn't he report it? And, uh, you know, when you put all those pieces together, in addition with the fact that he allegedly told people that he knew how to dispose of bodies and had chemicals in which to do so, I mean, all of those things together would have painted a picture for the RCMP prior to the event, as opposed to in hindsight, and potentially they could have taken investigative action to uncover guns and other things that may have prevented all this from occurring. Yeah, what comes away is, you know, very disturbing, obviously, uh, and, and the portrait of someone who, uh, you know, ha had a lot of issues, uh, to put it mildly. I'm curious as well about the gun factor, Chris. You know, the Prime Minister has now moved toward banning, I, I believe it's something like 1,500 assault-style weapons. Your take on that uh, as it relates to this case? I, I don't see how it relates to this case, really. I mean, ultimately, every gun he had, he had illegally. He had no authority to own any guns. That is, apparently, he got some from the U.S. That's illegal. He had handguns that weren't registered. That's illegal. Um, so are more gun laws going to make people like him say, OK, well, the gun laws are bad now, so I, I don't think I'm going to do bad things? I don't see that as realistic. The assault rifles have been banned for years. Uh, Semi-automatic rifles, there's still lots of them out there that aren't banned that are just as deadly as what they've recently ordered banned. So I just kind of see this as a bit of political smoke and mirrors, to be quite honest, uh, and not something that would have prevented this from occurring. Yeah, one last thing, just the idea of, you know, the documents relating to a plan here, Chris, which again, you know, you know, there's this notion of does this just sort of happen to somebody snap? And again, we see you know, some, some pretty clear uh, suggestions here that, you know, there was a plan here uh, and that, you know, there were red flags and it just he wasn't stopped. 
That's right. A very evil, methodical, and smart person uh, that would for, would, for every reason, he decided he was going to kill a bunch of people, uh, some of which he knew and obviously targeted. Others just happened to be the wrong place at the wrong time. So it's just ugly. It's evil, uh, but so planned and deliberate. How do you prevent that from happening, whether you ban every gun in the world? Uh, it's really tough to stop these things. It's sad, but it is a bit of a reality in the world. Chris Lewis joining us from Midland, Ontario, a man with a lot of experience in law enforcement, he ran the Ontario Provincial Police Force for a number of years with his take on the story. Good to have you back, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Todd, for having me.